Okay. So in this example, um, so we talked a lot about obviously money, right? And this rate of return is kind of something interesting because the one thing I want to talk about is, um, is cells. Cells grow, right? As turned about as far as like mitosis, they divide, correct? Right? Now, so let's kind of look at um, this situation because everything we've been talking about money has been happening in a year. Now we talked about how things could speed up because that makes a lot of sense because in a year, right, if, if you have a cell and it just divides once, then you'd have two cells, correct? Now, we can use our formula to understand that. McLogan? Yes. Mr. Frizzetti's sub is on his way to pick up Frizzetti's students. OK. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate your assistance. Not a problem. So let's go ahead and talk about, um, let's go and do the same kind of formula that we use for, comp for interest, compound interest. But let's go and use that for um, over the understanding the cells. So A is going to be our final amount, which is really going to be our number of cells times our initial value, which would be the number of cells we're going to start with. Um, one plus our rate of return. Now again, if you, no, I'm sorry, R, times the number of years T. All right? Well, let's just look at this for one year, OK? So for one year, if we have a cell, right, that is just going to compound once, we're, um, we're going to have one cell, one plus, if it doubles, right, that basically means that's a rate of return of, if you have one and now you have two, that's a rate of return of 100%, just like we just did it, right? We just did 100 instead of one. So that's going to be rate of return of one, and we're only going to do this for one year. So therefore, one cell at the end of the year compounded once, goes through mitosis, you now have Two, right? Now, we all understand, the reason why this is important, we understand in finance, it's not a good idea to compound things yearly because we, that means your money's not earning money, right? So the more we compound it, the more our money is going to be earning money for us, correct? Well, and the same thing, do cells divide every year? Do they wait a year and they say, oh, 365, let's divide. Do they do that? No. Do they do it every month? Do they do it as week? Every week? Month? Seconds? Milliseconds? Nanoseconds? Can they like divide upon the dividing? Well, that's kind of weird. Like you can only like I don't know how fast can you go. So let's let's look at this formula though. What about if they did do monthly? Let's just look at that. So again, as I talked about, you're not earning, or actually let's do quarterly. Let's do what we said. So if you're gonna do that, if let's say the cells were going to go through the process quarterly. But again, guys, you don't, don't go through the whole cycle in a quarter. You go through 25% of the cycle in the quarter, correct? Right? In a year, we are going to divide. But we're going to do is we're going to say, instead of getting the 100% at the end of the year, instead of at 365, boom, you go through 100% rate of return, we're going to say at the end of quarter one, you get 25% return. At the end of quarter two, you're now going to have 50% return, right? So what we're doing is we still start with one cell. 1 plus now, we're taking that rate, r, and dividing it by 4. So you're going to take r divided by 4, right? Which is really 1, yeah, 1, sorry, divided by 4. And then here's where it kind of gets also interesting. You now just added four more compounding periods, correct? If you're going to compound it now four times within a year, you just added four more times. It's kind of like in this example, we just added four more rows. Yes? So what that means is we have to add those, we have to add those compounding rows here. Now, actually, I didn't calculate this, and I don't calculate this. So anybody that has a calculator that wants to go and do this for me, that would be greatly appreciated. So monthly, if we were going to do monthly, we'd say A equals 1 plus 1 plus our interest rate of 1 divided by 12, raised to the 12. Now I'm just going to use 1 because that's the year. Did anybody get the quarterly? 2.44? 
Just give me the decimal, it's fine. Two decimals, fine. Monthly? Then I do monthly? A equals one. 14.5. Was it? Two point. 14. Wait. Yeah, but that's not right. Something, somebody did wrong, something wrong. Oh, uh, I probably did order So can somebody check this one then? Okay, 2.6 sounds about right. Okay, 2.61? Okay. And then for over here, daily would be 1 over 365 divided by 1 times 365. Again, guys, you can see that we can go 2.71. We can, we can go every second, millisecond, nanosecond, right? Now, here would be every single second. Think about it, there's 60 seconds in a minute, right? There's 60 minutes in an hour. There's 24 hours in a day. And there's 365 days in a year. So 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. 536. There you go. So, and if you guys calculate this, What do we see? Does anybody get that? No, it's a little bit more advanced though. Two point seven. Can I calculate with a graphing calculator? It gets a little bit more. Was it? What about this one? Then this one's wrong. I don't remember what. Two point seven. Yeah, one four. And this one is two point seven one one eight, right? That makes sense. Okay. I did three decimal places? Oh, okay. All right, so let's look at this. This is kind of interesting, though. This is interesting. This is very interesting. Because what we noticed in, in this example, guys, is something's happening. So in the first example, we did simple interest. That was constant linear growth. Right? In the second example, we did compound interest, compounding yearly. That was exponential growth. Right? So it was growing on this exponential um, thing. Now, there's something that's happening here. This is still the same thing, but now I'm not changing the years. So it's still exponential growth. It's still compound exponential. But what's happening, I want you guys to see, what is happening as I increase the number of compounding periods? is the number of actual cells. So what's important about this is even after a year, I have more than it's already started dividing again, right? This 0.44 means it's already started dividing its next cell, right? So am I, am I further along in the process the more times I compound it? Yes, right? Um, and however, what's happening to the rate of growth? What's happening to the rate of growth? No, the rate. How big are the, like from here to there is 0.44, but the distance from here to here is really small, right? So it's getting smaller. The rate of growth is slowing. And that kind of makes sense, guys. I mean, think about it. If you go from every minute to every second to every nanosecond, like you can't like, eventually you're gonna like go over yourself, right? There is a limit to how fast you can do something. Would you guys agree? So if what's happening then, if you think about this in functions form, this is approaching some number, right? And we talked about approaching in terms of like asymptotes. Yes, yes, no? So maybe, let's see if maybe we can write a function that would represent this. So let's do this as y equals, and I'm not gonna include that one, I'm gonna include this one, plus, so what is our unknown? What is the thing that we keep on changing? What's our variable? R, right? Well, I'm just going to use x for that. And then t is always going to be 1. So let's just do x. So let's check out what this graph looks like. OK? 
Now, if you go ahead and graph this, I'll save you a little bit of time. It's going to have an asymptote. And it's going to have a horizontal asymptote if that's approaching. All right? And then, so that means we've got to figure out, well, what is that value? Does anybody remember the notation to be able to figure out what that value is? It was in the last chapter. Limit. So we could say the limit as x approaches infinity of the function 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. And it keeps on getting 2.718. And then actually, this decimal keeps on repeating itself. So the, clo the more higher and higher, bigger and bigger numbers we get, the closer and closer we're approaching this number. Does anybody know what we call that number? That is where our good old friend e is from. This is the definition of e. It's the limit. It's, it's basically what our graph is approaching is how, as we keep on picking up this compound interest, as we keep on picking up the times we can compound something, the limit that we're approaching if, of this compounding is e. That's where e comes from. That's what e is. And that's important because um, like, earning money every monthly, every week makes sense. But if we want to model like population growth of cells, of rabbits, of whatever, there's no consistent of like how fast they compound, right? We basically want to say they're compounding consistently. So the last two things I want to give you guys is right over here. So when we have another, our last two formulas is periodic compound interest. Periodic compound interest is A equals P times 1 plus R over N times NT, where N equals the number of compounds. And the last one is conti um, continuous in interest. Continuous, uh, sorry, compound interest. And that is going to be A equals P. Well, do we really need to include all of this stuff? Because we know as this keeps on getting to infinity, or higher, higher, it's just approaching what? E. e. And we use a little bit more calculus to understand why the R is now raised at the power. But hopefully you guys can see that is now the formula for continuous compound interest. And then we have compound